Hello YouTube, Jonathan here, and today I have a special video for you. We're going to switch uh, versions of Axis and Allies. In fact, we're going to go all the way back to the very first Milton Bradley game. Now, I believe that there was a game, from what I've read online prior to this one, uh, that was not made by a major game developer, and then Milton Bradley picked it up. Um, but this is the one that I learned on. This one, I believe, was created uh, or sold, rather, for the first time, I think it was in 1984. Um, so when I was in high school, actually, is when I got to introduce to this game, I remember I was at a friend's house, and we had actually gotten together because we decided we wanted to play uh, Civilization II Hot Seat, uh, if you think about how long ago that was, I think we're up to Civilization VI with uh, an expansion pack by this point. But it was in high school days, and because it was hot seat, one only one person could sit at the keyboard at a time, and the other two had to go do something else. There were three of us together. And uh, while uh, two of us were waiting to take our turn, we happened to see this Axis and Allies box, and we thought, huh, we're all kind of history buffs. We wonder what that game is all about. So we got it out and set it up. And then for the rest of my high school career, uh, we would get together uh, sometimes once a week, sometimes once every couple weeks, just depending on what was going on, uh, maybe on a Friday or a Saturday, and just play Axis and Allies. Um, I couldn't tell you how many games we played. I just know that it was a lot. And so what I'm going to do in this video... Um, just to kick things off, I'm not going to go over any individual strategy because I want to take a little bit of time to re-examine the board and think, rethink through some of the strategies that I remember us employing way, way, way back in the day um, before I make a strategy video uh, just to evaluate those, see if I still agree with them based on the experience that I have now or if maybe I do things differently or, or look at things differently. There are a couple things that I notice about this board that kind of jump out at me because now um, for some time I've been used to playing other versions. I'm not saying these are good or bad things, uh, it's just things that I notice. Uh, far fewer units on the board. Uh, we have those spaces, if you see up here across the top, uh, to put extra units that don't fit. And I did in fact have that issue a few times on Berlin and on... Uh, England, I couldn't fit everything in there until so you'll see I put Germany's industrial complex and anti-aircraft gun up there, and it did the same for England up there, um, because spaces are kind of small. There are also fewer spaces, at least it feels that way to me. Again, not saying that that's a good or bad thing, but I'm going to have to recalibrate my mind, I think, uh, before I tr focus on strategies, just to... Um, um, so that I don't lose track of that. C zones also are not numbered in this game. So you'll see on these placards down here that show where to place everything, it simply says, I'll try and angle it here, I'll step over so the shadow so you don't have a glare. Um, let's say that battleship, it just says, oh, it goes in Gibraltar. Well, there's one C zone that that could be. It, the the uh, little cards just say what sea zone you put it outside of, or what territory to focus on, and then you put it in that uh, adjacent sea zone. A couple of other things to keep in mind with this game. Oh, a couple other things. Um, I noticed that both England and Japan are a single sea zone, or surrounded by a single sea zone which was changed in other versions. Australia is still, uh, it looks like, three different sea zones. Uh, the island itself is just one territory, but it borders several different sea zones. Um, because all of England's sea units, at least around the island itself, are going to go in that one territory, I feel like that's going to have implications for uh, the German Air Force and for England trying to protect its navy. Now, Something else to remember in this game is that transports do in fact defend. They defend at a 1, so it's the lowest value that you can have, but they do defend. They're not defenseless. Tanks attack at a 3, 
just like always, but they defended a two, which is a little bit different than some of the other versions where they attack and defend it a three. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, battleships. Um, if you play the CD version, which I had at one point, and uh, I might have it in a pile somewhere. I haven't been able to locate it recently. Um, I, you can play on that game with a variant where battleships are double hit like in all the other Axis and Allies games, but um, I double checked the rules on this one, the official rules, before posting this video, and battleships are only single hit, which makes them uh, equally powerful on offense, like coastal bombardments, they still attack and defend it a four, but they're going to be much easier to destroy, which also is going to have implications for England up there in the North Atlantic. Um, let's see. England has a sub down here, which seemed kind of strange. Normally, I'm so used to seeing that as a destroyer or um, like a cruiser in different versions again. Not commenting on whether it's good or bad, it just seems a little bit strange to me because I'm so used to other versions. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We've got a Japanese fighter in the Philippines and a transport off the coast rather than off the coast of Quang Tung. I'm um, going to have to get used to that. I think that's about it. So, because this is just a kickoff video, um, and I don't want to get too much into different strategies. I'm going to call a quits there, but uh, I'm excited about this new series, excited to get my hands on a copy of this game. Uh, never actually owned it in high school because I had about, I think I had like three different friends, each who owned a copy, so there was no reason really to get one. And then by college time, that was when Revised was coming out, and so I got that, and that's what we always played. So excited to get a copy of this, excited to start going through strategies and get some videos up.